All right, watch fans. I got another one, and it is a watch gang special. So this could be a the black monthly one, or it could be a wheel spin. Who knows? But I guess we'll find out. Legacy Diver. J.A. McCabe. All right. Okay, it's kind of cool. I like that. From Belfast, London. All right, let's see if I can find a video. Otherwise, we'll get right back into the watch. Whoosh. All right, guys, so this is the James McCabe Legacy Diver in the dusty sapphire color. Now, the MSRP for this watch uh, is 500 British pounds. So I don't know what that is. It's got to be a little bit over $600, but I'll put the conversion up there at the top. Um, this is a very nice watch, actually. It's not just your run-of-the-mill watch. Um, it is actually a limited run. As you can see here, this is number 83 of 500, and that is 500 total watches of this line, not just of the particular color combination, but of the entire line. Uh, so I was kind of happy to get this one because it's a very nice color combination. And unfortunately, I'm probably gonna end up having to keep it as well, which gets really frustrating because what am I gonna do with all these watches? Uh, so what can I say? Now, um, this box may look familiar, and that is because it is the same as the uh, Earnshaw. So, same company um, that owns them, uh, I forget. I think Dartmouth Brands, perhaps. I think that's what it is, but uh, very good company. And this is uh, fantastic quality. Um, in terms of the price, it really, it feels, this watch, and remember, I paid $118 for it, right? MSRP is 500 British pounds. This watch feels, honestly, um, probably about $300 to $350. And I'll back that up with some of the features that it comes with. Uh, for one, it is a limited run. I already told you it's number 83 out of 500. And I'll show you right here a picture of the case back that kind of reinforces that. Um, it's interesting because they put a little artwork there. Normally, because of the type of movement this has, and we'll go over that in a minute, <clears throat> uh, they generally like to have a window to show you what the inside looks like. In this case, they, uh, they cover that and they provide you with uh, uh, just a little bit of graphics on the back. Now, the movement, the movement being used here, uh, I'll put pictures of it right there. It's a 22 joule movement. Uh, I haven't opened it yet, I will. I assume it's a Citizen Miyota, probably 80, 8520, something like that. Um, but it's very nice. You know, my first thought with a solid case back like this was to assume that it's, uh, it's a quartz, right? You know, but then I saw the ticking and so I still assumed, you know, because there's a lot of uh, new Mecha Quartz versions now coming out, Seiko Mecha Quartz, and they tick similar to this too, and it's very nice, but I'm very impressed with this watch. It is a very nice watch. Uh, can't say so much for it being actually a diver, though I will say it's got, oh, it ticks off all the, all the check boxes, but it's only 100 meter, and that's okay, right? Because back in the day, uh, if you look at this at this face, and, and I'll put a real zoom in picture of the face, so you can really appreciate it because this doesn't do it justice. Uh, when you look at this, this represents similar to what you used to see uh, with the the old skin divers. Now, skin divers, to be completely honest with you, they usually didn't have much more than uh, five ATM, which is you know five bar or fifty meter water resistance. This has a hundred. Uh, so this is a hundred meter water resistant, which quite honestly is, is perfectly acceptable. Um, you know, if I was to wear this diving right here in Florida, they sink a bunch of old battleships. I think the, uh, Ariscany 
is was sunk off the coast of Florida. And they do that to, to, to try and create a, uh, a fake reef, uh, an artificial reef to grow on um, and for sea life. And, uh, you know, that's accessible in far less than 100 meters. Most people that do diving per se uh, will do that. And you can certainly wear this swimming and snorkeling. It's a nice watch. Um, you know, I usually like to wear a beater if I'm going to go to the beach, but it is very nice. 100 meters is perfect. It does have a, a good working trim ring. It has excellent action uh, with no back play. It really is just fantastic. I'll put the clicks at the top. I don't feel like counting it right now. Um, on with the face again. Uh, you know, it's Roman numerals. There's only two. <laughs> but like I said, it looks like the common skin diver. And it actually lights up quite well. Um, there's nothing that lights up on the bezel, so you're probably not going to use it for deep sea diving. You're just not. But I'll show you, and I'll take a picture, but I just kind of want you to see how it does uh, illuminate. And it's quite, quite good. Good hands um, and, and indicators. So it, it is quite nice. Um, case is stainless steel, and I really like the design of the, of the body. Um, it's got nice arches here. Uh, very distinct, very reminiscent of sort of what was for the early dive watches, and which is why they call it the Legacy Diver. In particular, I love this bracelet. I really do. This is reminiscent of the old, um, what you call it, the presidential Rolex, as well as what you used to see on the, the Seiko watches in the 80s, late 70s, early 80s. I, I love this style. I really do. And these are solid links. They're not small. They're not cheap. Uh, you know, I don't, I hope this can really portray how nice it is, but it is a good, solid, solid watch. Of course, it uses also the old style clasp, which, you know, I've kind of railed on these before, but look, Wenger does this too. So, you know, I have so many Wengers from the 90s, the, the Swiss, um, the SAC, Swiss Army Knife design ones. They're all just like this. We all know and love this style. It's not the uh, the two button or whatever, but it's decent. Uh, the crystal is a sapphire. You can kind of see sort of the blue, the blue look there. It is solid sapphire. It's not just coated, so it's very nice. It's actually raised too, which I kind of like. It's very reminiscent of sort of back in the day, right? They used to use, for the most part, a uh, an acrylic, but I still really like this. I think it truly is a fantastic watch. Uh, and it makes sense, right? Because James McKay being owned by the same company does Earnshaw. That Earnshaw watch I did was was really just truly a fantastic watch. And this one is fabulous as well. Um, I'll just get right into the, the measurements. Do, do, do. 41. I'd say this is about 20. Good, solid, original 20. Many of them were 19 and 18 back in the day. So 20 is a good, reasonable approach to sort of a vintage style. This looks pretty thick. I'm going to say 13 and a half, 14, 13 and a half. Look at that. I'm, I'm like right on. All right, let's do lug to lug, 41 and a half. All right, and let's check the weight. One forty, good solid one forty. So it has good weight, and I just I want you guys to see too because um, it is a slightly smaller face, but it's not like one of the old thirty nine or thirty eight millimeter styles. It it sits well. I've got seven and a half inch wrists, right? I've got big hands. Um, I'm six foot three, so this this still sits very nicely on me. Um, I I would not be out of place wearing this. I really like it unfortunately, because um, then that means I have to keep it. And, and this is getting really frustrating, uh, honestly. Like, I've got to start selling these watches. I can't keep keeping all these watches, and Earnshaw and McCabe certainly are not helping me. <laughs> so I don't know what to do. Um, oh, man. All right. Well, I don't think I'm forgetting anything, but I feel like I am. Maybe I'm racing through this, but it really is a fantastic watch. Oh, yes. Screw down crown. So. All right. Well, if you like this watch and you want to see more, please leave a thumbs up and uh, you can hit the bell to get notified immediately. And please subscribe. Really appreciate it. Thank you.